Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. And welcome back. Chris Cashman here live in Redmond, Washington. Hopefully you never left. Wherever you are, I hope you're enjoying the Microsoft Research Machine Learning Summit as much as I am. Some fantastic information, some brilliant minds on display today. In just a minute, we will be joined by Professor Judea Pearl, who you just heard in his keynote there, eager to take your questions about machine learning and cause and effect relationships there. If you have a question for Professor Pearl, you can submit that through that chat room on the right side of your screen. It's right there, and you can do that. And without further ado, Professor, welcome. How are you today? I'm doing great, Chris. We're very happy to have you uh, on our live online broadcast. We know you just did some heavy lifting on stage, so thanks for carving out time with us here backstage. Our viewers are eager to ask you some follow-up questions based on hearing your keynote. But before we open it up to our viewers, I'd like to ask a couple of questions of uh, you, if you don't mind. A lot of your work is concerned with causality. Why do you see this as such an important topic? That's the way we talk. That's the way babies learn to maneuver themselves in the environment. That's the way scientists think and communicate. This is what science is all about, cause and effect. Uh, all the rest are just surface phenomena. Well, speaking of which, we have a question on the surface regarding that, and they say, uh, does causality really exist? Isn't it all just really correlation? I never heard this question before, but it, it makes me think. Huh. It's all correlation. Uh, yes, one, one can go to that extent and say it is, uh, could be reducible to statistical relationship if you have all the variables in the world. Uh, it can even be reduced to deterministic relationship without correlation if you have all the variables in the world, the confounders, the disturbances, the uh, uh, all the unobserved noise terms. Yes, but this is not helpful. The, uh, the way to handle causality, at least in my experience, is to capture it for what it is, as a new uh, phenomena that uh, demands its own um, algebra, its own mathematics, and regard is, is the source for what we see in life. In life, we see correlation, which is a reflection, or if you want, a reduction, like a reduction from a three-dimensional world to two-dimensional shadows uh, into the things that we can estimate and what we call correlation. But causality is the cause-effect relationship, <clears throat> or the source of what we see. And another question for you from our online audience. A viewer wrote us and says, you've written on the phenomenon of transfer learning, the idea that both in humans and machines, the, the more one learns, the easier it learns. Uh, this seems to be completely natural to this viewer in terms of how they as people learn, but why does it apply to machines as well? Well, the, the more machine learns, the, in, even in the classical machine learning, the more uh, relationship it has with which to form features and uh, uh, atomic relationship with which to, which to combine to form a more complex relationship. So this is uh, explainable even in traditional machine learning such as classification and so on. The uh, paper that I wrote on transfer learning has to do with the, the phenomena <coughs> that by learning uh, a certain relationship, you get the ability to generalize them to new environments. Uh, on util utilizing those relationships that you learn together with your model of mm -hmm. what makes two environments the same, what, what makes them different. The combination of the two pieces of knowledge gives you an ability that you don't have without it. I mean, the ability to determine how to transfer knowledge learned in one environment to another. 
another question for you from our online audience here. Uh, data mining and predictive analytics have been around for many years now, so why do you think there has been a renewed interest and a lot of hype in this area over the last year? I don't really understand it. Mm -hmm. I haven't followed the development in data mining or knowledge mining. For me, knowledge mining means transfer or inferring the cause-effect relationship uh, behind the data, which we call uh, knowledge or which we call understanding. Okay? And uh, I haven't seen much work on causal understanding in the data mining community, and therefore I do not understand the uh, state of advancement, nor do I understand the recent hype, if there is one. Hmm. Thanks, I Professor Pearl. I have to... I have to... Hype on big data, yeah? Yeah. yeah.